the Andromeda, which had been tracking us on radar since before dawn, appeared alongside at 11.30. This was Thor's first operation on her latest tour of duty on the fishing grounds. Ahead of us, still not visible, was the Grimsby trawler Ross Resolution. For Andromeda, the task of heading us off. For Thor, the problem of how to overcome the frigate's higher speed and manoeuvre close enough to the trawler to cut her nets. Warning sirens on board the frigate and on the gunboat were to blast on several occasions over the next hour as the ships appeared to be heading for collision. As the cat and mouse chase continued, the naval commander ordered the Ross Resolution to haul in her nets. The Thor was making headway. to the trawler, Andromeda came closest to us yet as she placed herself between Thor and Ross Resolution. The actual collision came about 10 minutes later with the trawler a mile away and Thor now heading north. The frigate appeared at speed from the stern. The moment of impact was lost to us from our position on the lower deck. But the collision punched two holes in the bow of the Thor, shattering part of the gunboat's heating system. According to the Thor's captain, he tried to avoid collision by slowing down and turning away. With the Thor at anchor, Iceland's flagship, the Tyr, appeared on the scene to see if we needed assistance, while a Coast Guard plane circled overhead. And with the Tyr came the Navy vessel that had been shadowing her, the frigate Nyad. The dangerous game of confrontation here on Iceland's fishing grounds appears to be getting worse. And with it all comes the danger that collisions between frigates and gunboats could lead to something more serious than damage to ships. Norman Rees, News at 10, on the gunboat Thor. In a Force 10 gale, the Thor battles through the North Atlantic at quarter speed. The storm means that no British boats will be fishing today, so the gunboat is in no hurry. The Thor was built 25 years ago, making it the oldest of Iceland's Coast Guard fleet. But so far in this Cod War, her crew have been in the thick of the battle. A quarter of the ship's helicopter deck is still missing after a collision with the Tug Lloydsman, and only one other gunboat has cut more British trawls. But with the forecast that the bad weather will continue for at least another 24 hours, the crew know that today at least, they'll not be called to action stations. Somewhere just ahead of us, the British trawlermen are weathering this storm, unable to fish and unable even to run for shelter. But it's the sort of day that the Icelandic Coast Guard crews like best. The day, they say, when the weather is doing their job for them. To escape the storm herself, the Thor takes to the calmer waters of an east coast fjord. Here the gunboat will be lost on the radar of the waiting British frigates and the fjord will protect her too from the eyes of the RAF patrol planes. The skipper is Captain Helgi Halvardsson, aged 44. Married with three children, he's known as Babyface by the British trawlermen. The gunboat carries a crew of just 23, and in the fjord they can relax, while the British ships, forbidden to enter Iceland's territorial waters, must remain at sea. And at dusk, the Thor leaves the fjord with the news that the weather may be improving. And with the improvement will come a renewal of the battle of nerves between gunboats and Royal Navy. Norman Rees, News at 10, with the Icelandic gunboat Thor. 
gunboat crew are now on full alert and the British trawler fleet lies just a few miles ahead of us. And steaming up alongside us, the British frigate Leander. The Leander is nearly four times as large as us and about twice as fast. And what it will have to do is to come alongside very close, at times almost veering across our bow in an attempt to persuade the gunboat to change course and protect the trawlers. This is what the Cod War is all about. It's an ugly situation and with determined men at the helms of both ships, potentially very dangerous. The Thor is only just out of port after her collision with the frigate Andromeda. And this encounter with Leander is her first since being repaired. As the British frigate lowers fenders to avoid damage in the event of a contact, the gunboat skipper, Captain Helgi Halvardsen, is predicting trouble. And I'm quite sure he is trying, and in his mind, with Captain Fregot, he is going to do something. I'm quite sure. And he's still going slowly in towards on the port side. And he knew it very well. He is, number one, sailing us up. And number two, he is coming in towards on the port side. And that is uh, against the international sailing law. If he continues on this course and you don't alter yours, will you collide? Yes, of course. And within a few seconds, a collision does seem inevitable as the Leander appears to turn in an attempt to make Thor alter course. For the next 30 minutes, the gunboat and frigate continue their running battle of nerves as again and again the Leander's bow threatens to damage the Thor. On the radio, the chatter between frigates and support ships warns the trawlermen to haul in their nets. The trawler on my starboard bow, are you trawling? Let's have a go, This trawler is going to be on flashing my bed. Are you trawling, Alan? Then for a moment, the tension seems to be over. The frigate comes along our starboard side and both ships slow down. Well, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous action what she's doing now to us. Well, we are on a slow speed now on board Ischion and uh, she is it also, but it seems to me that she is going to uh, get alongside of us. Maybe the captain wants to come on board for a tea. That's okay. He's welcome. But only minutes later, with the Thor again under steam, but several miles from the nearest trawler, comes the build-up to the collision. And on the bridge of Thor, there's pandemonium. Everybody wants it out. He's coming, he's coming. He's ready now. He's coming. Everybody get up. Running. 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 He's in with us. Look up. confined to an area of the helicopter deck already torn away in collision with the tug Lloydsman. And Leander, showing scraped paintwork, some denting and a small hole, continues to shadow us for several miles. Norman Rees, ITN, with the gunboat Thor. To save the gunboat Thor, a three-day sail from the fishing grounds to Reykjavik and back, the Icelandic government moved their inquiry into the collisions to this small fishing village of Sædisfjorda on the east coast. It was a chance, too, to catch up with some minor repairs on the battered gunboat. The gunboat skipper, Captain Helgi Halvardsen, and his officers were called to give their version of the events leading up to the crashes with the frigates Andromeda and Leander. 
The hearing in a tiny courtroom, normally used for minor traffic offences or to fine drunken sailors, took just three hours. The British Embassy had declined to be represented, so there was no opportunity for the inquiry, headed by an Icelandic judge, to hear the Royal Navy's point of view. The court does not reach a verdict, but copies of its report were flown direct to Reykjavik, where tonight they're still being considered by the Icelandic government. Norman Rees, 